Okay, we're live. Hello, hello, everybody. I hope that you got my updated links for this. It turns out that I sent out the email, had put in the links, and Active Campaign just somehow made them disappear. So I'm really sorry about that. I did send them out again um, this morning. I sent them out Wednesday, and I just sent them out now. So uh, don't worry if you you come on late or you're just seeing this. I will send out the links to the replay, though it will show up here as well. And just first, before we get started, uh, let me know if you can hear me because I'm not wearing my earbuds. So I have my microphone here. Just give me a quick shout. Yes, you can hear me. Yes, you can see me. All right. And I will keep an eye out for those. Uh, it's just me today, so if you've been on ones before where I've had someone with me, sorry, just me today, but I'm going to be going through our new course, which is on how to build multiple streams of income. And Casey said, yes, you can, uh, you can hear me, excellent. So Barb said, you can hear me, excellent. Okay, we're good. Now, if you have any questions at all during this, uh, just post them in the comments. I can see them. I can definitely see the ones on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, LinkedIn can be a little bit trickier, but I think most of you are usually on Facebook and YouTube anyway. So put that in. And as we go through any questions, I will keep an eye out for them. Uh, just as a quick little Reminder, in case you haven't seen it yet, that is the URL for the course I'm going to be talking about. That's where you can get the license, the white label license to pick it up. But I'm going to be walking through the whole thing and all the key concepts in it today. So you're going to get a lot out of today. It's almost like a mini training of the course itself. But I'll show you anything. If there's anything you want me to open up, just let me know. But it's contentsparks.com slash income streams. Okay. And as I was saying, uh, this is about how to build multiple streams of income. And let me show you that page really quickly so that you can see. Again, I'll be looking out for your comments. Uh, we're going to do this. This is the page you'll land on. If you do go to that URL, which was the income streams one, um, and you'll see on here if you ever want to go back and get a quick look at some of the benefits of the course, you know, why you want to build multiple streams of income, the roadmap of the course, and then there is a little overview of each one of the modules, but I'm going to talk about those anyway. So what I'm going to do is just dive, we only have an hour, so definitely ask your questions, but I'm going to dive right in. It's a big course but it's a little bit different. It is not the same, and I've been already been asked this, not the same as our course on easy passive income. This is totally different. This is a course, that's, that's a course about building passive income inside your business. This is a course about building multiple streams of income, either as an individual or as a business, and they should be diverse, one, diverse ones, all right? So there is a big difference there. And um, Charles said, greetings, Sharon. I already picked up the course and anxious to implement. Can't stay as I have another commitment. Okay. Just want you to say thank you for all you shared with Justin Steve Hembert yesterday. Oh, I'm so glad you were there. I did a, a training for Justin Popovich's group for Tools for Motivation that was on how to create a five-day challenge out of um, using PLR. And if you guys are interested, I can do it for you too. So uh, definitely pick up that look at the replay. All right. So let me head over to the slides. All right. And you should be able to see those. And I'm going to go into the view that you would see as an instructor as well. All right. So you'll notice on here, there's kind of a preview and you'll see underneath the slides, there's notes. Those come from the course book. So you use those as your guide, not as a script. I know a lot of people like to use it as a script, but you'll do much better if you make sure you understand the course and then use that as your guideline for your notes, okay? So I'm gonna, as I said, this is, this is about multiple streams of income and big course, so I'm gonna skim through. If you want me to stop on anything, let me know, I will stop. 
So multiple income streams, why do we want them? Financial stability, protection, prosperity, you can think of a lot of different things, I'm sure, and they reduce your risk. So for instance, say you only have one job, one job with one stream of income or a business of, that you have one stream of incomes like consulting, that can dry up quickly. Say you only have one main client, that can disappear overnight. And then what? If you don't have other income streams as well, you're left kind of high and dry. So in a course like this, you're going to go through and help other people identify which other income streams make sense to add. It could be things inside your business. It could be things separate from your business. And you're going to go through different types of income streams because I'm not just talking about adding products to your business or adding a course to a coaching business, which is another stream of income, but you want to diversify as well. So uh, there are a lot of different sources. They, I said, financial stability. So if something dries up, you can earn more. You get more flexibility as well. So if you want to shift direction on something and it won't earn right away, you have other income sources as well that you can rely on risk as well, diversification of risk. So markets change and again, something can dry up. So you're diversifying that risk and you can also offset losses. So one stream isn't performing as well. You've got others that you can focus on. But of course, there are things that are going to be challenges if you're, pick, if you're doing multiple streams. So just managing your time if you're very new to any kind of business, it's much easier to focus on one first and then expand because it's difficult to manage your time and juggle multiple streams. If you don't have the resources, if you have a real risk aversion, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well later on how you can decide which income streams make sense for you. Uh, difficulty prioritizing all the challenges of having multiple things and also scaling. So that's a, we did a whole course on building a scalable business. And there's a little bit in here about scaling as well and scaling income streams. So this is the roadmap through the course. This basically corresponds with the different modules and then there's lessons in each. So we're going to look at the types and categories of income streams. Cause like I said, this isn't just about passive income. Uh, in order to be able to assess which ones make sense for you, you need to look at your goals, your skills, your passions, what resources you have available, uh, have to clarify your non-negotiables. So that brings in things like risk or other things that, that have to be there for any income stream you pick. Creating an action plan always to implement and scale any income streams. So in tracking those with metrics, so you want to see how each one performs, so you know where to spend your time. Launching, so creating a plan for actually launching your first stream. And then in the final module and next steps, determining when to go next level and some of the next level tactics. So that's the roadmap through the whole course. And again, if you have questions as I go through, just pop them in the comments because I know I'm going to be speaking really quickly because... There's a lot to go through, and I know you're going to have questions and want to look at the rest of the material too, all right? Learning objectives, I'm just going to skip there because those match up with the roadmap. So potential income streams. In this lesson, so the title of the lesson is exploring them, right, and picking them. So you need to understand different types. There's passive, semi-passive, and active income. There are various categories of income streams. And you can have hidden ones already in your business that you can tap into. When you look at passive, it all of them, that first lesson focuses on how much time is involved, how much of your time and effort is involved. So for instance, passive, you've probably heard of before. The When you hear passive, you think, oh, there's no work involved in that at all, right? Well, yes, there is. But it's usually minimal effort, like something you just need to get set up and then there's very little maintenance to go on to go with so um for example um having a rental property where you're just collecting income from the tenants 
regularly or you know there and there isn't you know the property and maintenance you can kind of outsource that would be something or if you set up uh, an affiliate promotion that's ongoing that's evergreen that would be passive income or even upsells in a funnel that's all set up an automated funnel that's also passive and then active income or sorry semi passive income requires some ongoing effort Okay, so that's anything where maybe you're setting up campaigns. So here's affiliate marketing is another example there of semi-passive where you're doing promotions of different campaigns. So it's not automated and you need to put something together each time and maybe put together a bonus. That's semi-passive as well. So there's something you have to do ongoing. And then active is where you, you actively are trading your time for money. So for example, consulting, coaching, those are active income where you only get paid if you are putting in that time and effort. A live training where it's paid, that's active income because you don't get paid unless you're putting that time in, okay? So hopefully you see the difference between those and it's good to look at what you already have. So look at what's in your business because most people have at least you know one or two even though you don't recognize that you have more than one so one-on-one -on -one coaching would be active if you have a membership site where you only have to add things periodically that would be semi-passive and ebook could be could be either depending on the the amount of upkeep you need to do a low content product or book that you're just selling on say marketplace like amazon that's passive income. You have very little to do on that. And once you set up your marketing, you could just leave it there and do nothing or periodically do something. Same with something like a printable. So those are just a few examples. If you guys have specific examples that you've done, I would love to hear. Just stick them in the comments as well. As, and I'll go back and show them as I go through. And actually going back to say my business where I sell multiple different courses those are different streams of income for me, even though the business itself is one business. So I actually consider some of it, or a lot of it is semi-passive, but there's a lot of work involved up front in creating it. And then if I put, um, say, an upsell in, that's kind of passive. For, but affiliate income, where I'm just sending out promotions, would be semi-passive as well. Okay. That's just one example. If I add a paid course, like I do have a couple paid courses that are automated, those I set up as automated would be passive. If I add a live element, they're semi-passive. And Casey said, I've written two children's books. They took a lot of work for a few months. Yep. But bringing a thousand dollar month with very little work for the last year. That's a perfect example of what People think is passive income, but it isn't totally. So any even the most passive income has that work up front that you have to do to set it up and get it going. But then it can kind of operate on its own without having to do too much. So that's great. And if you do more of those, you can have more and more income coming in. You can have a whole whole slew be, your, be a, a known author on that. So keep it up. All right. Let's keep going here. Let's see what we have next. So you need to go look at yours, classify each, and knowing the difference, let's skim through a little bit. Um, the What we've done now also, I just want to point out in, in this slideshow, is at the end of each one, we have this remember. So this was a new thing we just added and decided it would really be helpful because, you know, we're always looking for ways to improve our materials and help you with teaching them. So in this what we've done is a last slide before the action steps that says, remember, and it's the key takeaways from that lesson. So in this case, it's remember passive income is minimal effort, semi-passive income is some ongoing effort, and active is definitely ongoing effort and involvement for everything where you don't get paid. And then you'll have some action steps on that. And Lesson two is exploring the income stream strategy uh, categories. So this is this is going to be really interesting for you and for teaching this because this is going beyond just 
you know, different product ideas in your business. So there's, you can divide up income streams into five categories. There's earned income, profit income, investment or interest income, rental income, and royalty income. And it goes through, the slides go through some examples of each. So like earned income is exchanging your time and effort for money, can be active or passive. Uh, I'm taking a quick look at the notes here. So it includes uh, wages, salaries, commissions, and tips not necessarily active. And this is where having these speaker notes are going to be really helpful for you for looking at the examples. So day-to-day -day operational. So that's something like having a job. All right. And then, uh, and here are the examples, working a full-time job, consulting and coaching, offering freelance services, affiliate marketing, exclusive content via sites like Patreon. All right. So the examples are right there for you. And also, when you're teaching it, maybe customize this a bit so that your audience will understand the different examples, but have them thinking beyond that. Profit income is earned from sales. So anything you're selling, like a book, a product you created, but it's not necessarily dependent on your time. So examples are a physical or digital product on your website or a marketplace like Amazon, uh, self-publishing ebooks or low content products. Uh, cross sells and upsells on existing products. So that would be profit. You know, you have an upsell and you're making a profit on the next thing in, the, in there, in your funnel, um, video tutorials, webinars, anything you're selling and making a profit on. Fixed term membership sites, those are all profit. And then we've got investment or interest income. Okay, stocks, bonds, real estate, stuff like that. And uh, there's some examples there, you know, real estate investments, cryptocurrency, lending, stuff like that. Rental income is renting out things that belong to you. So there's, you know, like a Airbnb that you own, different tools you might be leasing, uh, space to store vehicles. So you have a parking spot that goes with your apartment. You can rent that out. That's income. There's space on your car to advertise. There's uh, another thing people use a lot is Turo or Turo, I think. Turo or Turo, I can't remember. Um, my sons use this a lot. It's where people rent out their own car. So it's been really good. Like before they were old enough to use a rental car agency, they used to use Turo and rent cars that way. So that's another stream of income. And then we've got royalty income. So that's more intellectual property. I don't know how much that'll be applicable to your audience, but that's another example. So like a patent or sales of books that you've written, you'll get royalties on, uh, franchisees, stuff like that. All right. So remember those categories, earned, profit, investment, rental, royalty. All right that's going to determine that that's where people are going to look at where they want to pull their create new income streams. And uh, there's some various questions in the action guide. Remember there's an action guide always that goes with each of our courses and there's a bunch of worksheets with this one as well that I'll pull up as we go through. And then there's hidden income streams that a lot of businesses have can have whole courses on hidden income streams, untapped ones. So let's see if we have some examples. You can talk to your customers to get insights on what's missing. So things that they might want that you haven't created, that's a hidden income stream. Uh, and there's ways to collect data. So indirect and direct, you can look at the competition and check for streams of income that they're offering that's similar to yours that you could also do, maybe do differently. Look at the content and your site that's attracting views that maybe you don't have anything to sell on top of that. So think about that. Uh, success, you know, creating complementary things, similar income streams. So if you have one thing, um, you can look at, you know, what's popular now, you can create something similar. So just feed off of that success as well. So that'll give you ideas as well. So there's lots of different untapped income streams in your business too. And 
that's another thing you want to look at. So we've talked about a lot of different sources of income, different types of income, passive, semi-passive, active categories, and also the untapped ones. And a bunch of exercises in there. And one of the things I'm going to show you here, one of the worksheets that you get in here is an income stream idea bank. And let me just quickly open that up. I have a second monitor here, which is why it looks like I'm going and looking at a different spot. In the action guide folder, you'll see that there's an action guide and a whole bunch of worksheets. So this idea bank is something that you're going to keep adding to and your students are going to keep adding to throughout the course as they go through different inspiration notes. And there's plenty of space on here. They'll note their income stream ideas. This is a great document to add pages to and then maybe add into Canva. You can make it look nice here, but you can also easily put into Canva. So the easiest way to do that is to either use a template in Canva. This is very simple, so it has lots of lines in there. Or you can make it into a PDF and import it into Canva. So they have that feature now. It's not always a clean import, but all you need to do is take the file, drag it, and drop it into your dashboard in Canva, and it'll open up. It'll create a project, a file, as a P the PDF will convert to a document. Don't Right now, don't use the Word document feature because in Canva, I tried this out, and if you just drag the, the straight Word document in, it creates it as one super long page and there's no way to create page breaks. So that feature as of right now is not working properly. And I did talk to them about it and said it was completely useless. So, you know, please change that because <laughs> it doesn't work now. So that was that. Let me head back. Uh, let's see. Okay. So that's the action steps. First module, done. Any questions, please drop them in. Module two, it's all about what to consider when choosing your income streams. So this is really important because I'll show you that you need to know why you're doing it in the first place because it is work to set these up. You need to look at what makes sense for you, skills and interests and passions, and also what resources you already have. So these all are factors in, you know, skills, interests, all of that are factors in how you choose. And these are kind of the similar things you've seen before about understanding your why. So I'm going to skim through this a little bit unless you want me to stop anywhere. So we've got finding your why, you know, get inspired. It's not I want to earn $1,000 a month in passive rental in income, but I want to earn it so I have more time to spend with my family. So under you have to understand why you're doing this because there is work as well involved. And there's some different steps you can take to, to think about the why. Things like your values, looking at your current income streams, what upsets you, you know, different times you felt happiest. So there are various exercises in here and it's, under, it's important to understand that why behind why you're building multiple income streams in the first place. And there's a bunch of exercises in there. Skills and interests, looking at your unique skills is also gonna help you to see like where you have a natural talent. So that's another exercise in here, looking at your accomplishments, past jobs, you know, what other people say about you, what you love to do. These are all ways that you can capitalize and create new streams of income. So there's questions on there. And then I just wanna to head to the resources module. So it's important that a new income stream isn't putting a big strain on your resources. And resources is time too. You don't wanna be running around like crazy unless it's gonna be passive afterwards. So you wanna look at all of those things, gaps and limitations, where you have strengths, uh, and eliminate some of the ones right away that just don't make sense. So that's an easy thing to do, just looking at your resources. 
and then looking at your existing resources as well to see what you can use. And I mentioned time. That's part of your resources too. So you have to be really honest with yourself about how many hours you can dedicate. And one of the things you can have people do in the course is look at resources in terms of financial, like budget and time and how much time is involved in setting each one up and maintaining each one before you commit to anything. So let's see, looking at your finances, I mentioned, and uh, some of the things involved when you're looking at time and what's involved in, in commitment and resources for each one is things like earned income requires you know, education and training, possibly commuting to a job, you know, office equipment, stuff like that. Profit income requires things like inventory, uh, setting up a website, advertising, You've got things like investment or interest income, you might need to hire a financial advisor, uh, there's fees involved in trading, stuff like that. So think about what's involved in each one. And if you, your students are on a very tight budget, you want to make sure that the first new income stream is set up is really simple, quick to do and affordable. Right. So when when you get to the point in the course of going through ideas and prioritizing them, that's going to want, be one of the things. So these are just some quick and easy ideas you can start talking about at this point right away that are simple and easy to set up like upsells or low content products or putting affiliate links in or monetizing something you own, like the Turo renting your car. Um, adding a new customer segment to your existing built business or a simple digital digital product. So a lot of this is about products, but think about also those things like renting stuff out and setting a budget. And then there's that remember assessing your resources in advance. So then you would have people actually look at how many hours they can dedicate. And that's where they start again, adding to that income streams idea bank that I showed you. So that going to keep building on that. And now we get to the module on selecting your new income streams. And there are two main lessons in here. One is just brainstorming income stream ideas. And I'll show you there's a great extra that we have in there for that. And then what you're going to find really interesting here is the decision criteria to help prioritize and choose your streams of income. So brainstorming is you know, brainstorming, your typical brainstorming, looking out, you've got categories already and some ideas. There's some tips in here, like not reinventing the wheel, brainstorming in a group, maybe mind mapping with different categories and different ideas. So there's lots of ways to brainstorm. Scamper is a tool. There's more information in the course book, by the way, also. And some tips, don't reinvent the wheel, all that stuff. And this is where we have the Income Stream Ideas Bank and an epic list of income stream ideas. So let me show you that too, because this is going to be a great thing that you can do as a bonus, as a handout, or even as a lead magnet. So this is, let's see, eight pages of ideas in those different categories. So this is going to be great to help people brainstorm. And like I said, it could also be a lead magnet that you could use going into the course, just as something really simple. Maybe import this into Canva or get someone who's graphically inclined and good with design to make up something nice looking for you. And then just say, okay, set up an opt-in page to help people come up with ideas for new streams of income. So you'll see there's a whole bunch of earned income ones here, lots in there, and then profit income ideas, investment, rental, and even some royalty income ideas. So you're going to love that one. I know your students will love it too. Otherwise, you know, add it as a bonus in the course or lead magnet. Uh, let's go back. All right. Let's see. And now we're on lesson two. So module three. So we're at this point more than halfway through the course. So I'm looking down at the slide number. We've got 
there's 181 slides that I'm going through as fast as I possibly can so that we can get through it all and show you stuff. And um, I'm up to 100. Now, when you make this into a course, remember, you're not going to do it the way I'm doing it right now. You can do it as little bite-sized videos. So we like to keep all the slides together in one presentation just because it makes it so much easier to rebrand it and then split it up into separate little slideshows that you can record as videos and not have to worry about making mistakes. You could still keep it as one presentation and then just you know, use something like a, a Snagit screen capture and just stop after a certain point, save that recording, and then start it again on the next slide to do the next recording. So that's another way to do it. But if you've seen in the past how I've shown you how to do new color themes, it's much easier to do it in one because you can just like go in and go into design and go into like colors and just pick something new and it would apply it to everything right away. See, to all the different slides. So just a quick little thing to show you. Let me undo that and go back. Where were we? Okay, let's find it. So module three, we did the lesson one, brainstorming lesson two, decision criteria. Sorry to sidetrack there. They've come up with a bunch of ideas, time to choose some finalists. So you need to identify your non-negotiables. So examples of non-negotiables are, it has to be compatible with my existing business. So consistent with business goals, supports your why, fits into your sales funnel, um, complements your current products. You can work with your current customers, don't have to go into a new audience, taps into their needs, flexible and adaptable. So those are all things that would be related to compatible to your existing business. Quick and easy could be another non-negotiable for you where it's easy to set up, no extra time involved after it's set up. So that's that passive income, like a, like a printable that you just put in a marketplace, automated, outsourced, little additional marketing. Those are real quick and simple things. Another non-negotiable could be that it's within your risk threshold. So you're not going to be buying stocks and bonds on shorting them. So little risk, produce income quickly. Maybe you can pre-sell it. So that's another thing. Like if you want to create a course and pre-sell it before where you just have a, an outline, maybe before you put time into more of it. So you can reduce your risk that way. Also, you might want to make sure it leverages your interests and skills. So you can use what you have now, maybe tap into some of your passions and keep you engaged and interested make use of available resources could be a non-negotiable, like you don't want to have to buy new tech tools, a new platform, new software, stuff like that. Um, having great income generating potential, you want to make sure maybe that it's not something that's just going to produce small profit and never be able to scale or only have a little bit of, of return on your investment and time. So that could be another non-negotiable. So you have to be strategic about which income streams. Don't just say, um, okay, I'm going to create a coaching program. Well, great. I need to go to a whole new audience. It's going to take me six months to put it together. I'm going to have to buy a new software platform for that. And meanwhile, I'm trying to do my coaching and but one of your non-negotiables is quick and simple to set up, well, then that's not going to be the right one for you. So definitely do that, that uh, strategic approach. And what, what we did here is we've got two different worksheets in here to help with this. So let me head over and show you those. So we've got the first one was the key factors one. Yeah. Right. The key factors one was the first one. So in here, this is where you have people actually look at 
what are their non-negotiables. So they go through and check off which ones are their non-negotiables so that they're doing that first look, that first assessment of their own needs, of their own non-negotiables before they assess each income stream against it. So you'll see they're broken into categories that I just talked about, like compatible with the existing business, quick and easy, then my risk threshold, and it's broken down like uh, supports my why, taps into needs and interests, will produce income quickly, all those different things. And while this, again, is a worksheet that goes in the course with those action steps, I could also see this being a good lead magnet as well. So you could have a quick download of, okay, you know, what's important to you with multiple, when you decide to build multiple streams of income, multiple income streams, and have them just go through this. And then they know and they can evaluate against it. And the worksheet for evaluating is that decision checklist looks like this. So here, there's an example on the first page of what it would look like. So they copy over their non-negotiables into the blank spaces. And then for each specific income stream, you can give, do a check mark next to the ones that it fits. So for in this example, we've got an income stream of low income product, a planner, and it might leverage your current skills, use your available tools, tap into your audience, earn from it quickly, but maybe it can't be automated. Uh, it could be outsourced, but it says requires little to no additional expense. Maybe it does require expense, like outsourcing and stuff. I mean, these, this is just an example. It might be different for you. So the, you'd have people do that as well. And there's, I think we put in like three or four or five pages, actually there's several pages in here. And you can just make copies of more of the pages. So in this case, um, they would need to fill it in on each one. You could set it up in a spreadsheet too, if you wanted. So it's easier to create, I mean, to copy. Um, but this is a nice little thing to sell on its own also that you could set up in Canva, make it look really pretty and say it's a decision criteria checklist. But then they also need that other one. So the two go together. But it goes with that one activity. All right. Let's go back to the slides because we are moving along here. And I guess you're all listening because I don't see any questions. So that's good. It must be clear, but I am looking out for them. So develop your multiple income streams action plan. This is a bigger module because there are, there is a lot to do. So looking at the big picture, getting ready to scale, choosing your first stream to launch. And remember when you teach this course, everyone's going to have something different. So this isn't going to be a place where you go into depth on how to do it. You're not going to go into depth on how to create a short report or a low income product, uh, sorry. Yeah. Low content product, something like that, because you couldn't, everyone's going to have something different, but the real value here is planning it out, making sure you're thinking strategically about which streams to set up and then, and creating an action plan for that. And then a timeline and stuff. So looking at the big picture is some of that stuff on setting a budget, looking at how much time you have, how everything works together, um, creating a spreadsheet. And we do provide a spreadsheet on that that I'll show you in a sec. Um, taking a holistic approach step by step. So determine your budget, assess your time, look at how the income streams might work together. So that strategic view and making sure it's diverse. So don't put everything maybe on one audience and one or three products or something, diversifying a bit into different types of income. And then you're always going to be reviewing and adjusting and monitoring. So that is, let me show you the spreadsheet that I was talking mm -hmm. about also. So that's the managing your streams of income and it's opening up on the wrong screen. So over here, you can see it's nice, simple spreadsheet. Don't need something complicated here. You just need to list the income streams, say what category it is, like earn the profit, you know, stuff like that. Um, 
projected income. So that's really, I know it's really hard to do. And it's something that you want to keep simple here. Look at some sort of rough estimate of number of sales and income you could make from it. Because some things you know are going to be very small. Some things can scale easily. If at some point, uh, and there's projected expenses too, that's easier to do because depending on the type of income stream, you can break it down. If at some point you want to go deeper into finance stuff, you'll see that we did release a course on small business finance essentials uh, last month that that's more for, for people who already have a business and can and need to learn about how to actually analyze their different reports. So it's just an aside because I don't want this to get really complicated for you. Projected income, projected expense, and then that time commitment. So how many hours maybe in the beginning to set it up versus maintenance, stuff like that. And then make, there's always a space for notes because you know it might be secondary, primary, stuff like that. All right, going back, let's go back to these slides. So they're gonna start assessing each one, right? There's a nice little mini module here, mini module, a lesson on scaling. I mentioned we have this whole big course on building scalable business, which goes into detail about how to scale. Not, I'm not talking about growing at this point where you're earning more. Scaling is where you're looking at your systems and being efficient and how you can reduce waste and improve, and improve productivity, stuff like that, so that you can scale. So keeping your future growth in mind. So this is something that's really helpful when you're looking at building multiple streams of income because you only have so much time. You only have so many resources. But if you can build in some efficiencies, then it's going to be easier to add on more and more income streams without driving yourself crazy or losing quality or you know, everything suffering. So there's reasoning in there like, what I just talked about, efficiency, productivity, risk. Uh, there's a few tactics like looking at your existing business, um, productivity. So I don't want to go into too much detail on this, but I think you get the point about scalability where you can repurpose stuff, sharing text, streamlining processes, delegating, all those different things that are important for being able to grow and add income, income streams without adding tons of cost as well. And reducing waste, let's skim through this since we're moving along. So, right, so scaling, remember, is boosting efficiency to support growth without significantly adding resources, all right? Don't, you don't have to go crazy on this particular lesson because it's just to show that efficiencies are in there and you want to be thinking about them as you add income streams. And you can start having people think about that as well in the action guide. And then choosing your first income stream to launch. So they've been doing tons of brainstorming and thinking about which ones will make sense. Now it's time to actually look at that decision criteria checklist that I showed you earlier, where they were matching up their non-negotiables with different income streams and seeing which ones make sense to start with. So you want to consider other things as well, like is there one, because you might have different totals for several income streams where they all meet the non-negotiables, but you still have to decide which one to start with. So is there one that you're more passionate about one that feels riskier than the others and you don't want to do that much risk. One that seems to be the easiest to do. I always say go for the easiest and quickest to start with, especially if it's a passive income stream that you can just set up and then have it moving and then go into something else that you want to do that's going to take longer or more work. Um, like if there's something that's more complicated or do you have the cash and you need something? How soon is the cash going to come in on whatever you set up? Is it going to take six months or a year or two years before it really gets going? So startup businesses often can take several years before they actually make a profit and they need funding and investing on that. Things like 
Do you have the skills and knowledge already? Do you have the funds? Uh, how long is it going to take to set up all the, some of the things that I mentioned already? And one approach that, I, like I said, I would always focus on is the quick and easy. So it may not generate the most income, but it'll get you moving faster, add a new income stream quickly. So that's what I recommend. And it's going to be different for everyone, but that's the easiest thing to, to decide on there. And they're going to go back and look again at that decision criteria checklist and the spreadsheet and start going through that. Then they need to actually implement it. So this is where they have to start laying out the plan and the steps. There are certain steps any income stream is going to need to follow. That's the goals, the time and resource limits, a schedule to get it started and outs or outsource it and testing and validating. Really simple steps for any income stream, any of those different ones, earned, profit, royalties, rental, any of those. So that is where they can start setting up their action plan template. Nice, simple template. I'll open it up, find it for you. That is the last one because we're coming up to the end here. So this is the template you're going to give to people nice and simple where, and there's an example to start with where they're going to say, here's the type of income stream, like a low income product, like a journal. Here are my goals, nice smart goals. And earlier talked about what a smart goal is um, for this one. It's sell a hundred journals by the end of the quarter, generate 20 signups for journaling workshop. 75 new members, so you can have specific goals, time allocated. So in this case, the example, it's 18 hours a week spread over three months. So that's, that's a pretty significant amount of time because this is a bigger income stream. Um, and then three maintenance, which is the next one is three hours a week. So not bad for maintenance. You could probably call this semi-passive and um, a budget pretty tight budget for getting started. So you want to make sure that you're using the resources you already have. And then implementation schedule. This is where you need to put it. In, don't put it in here. You should use project management software or calendar or something like that. And then how you're going to measure your success. How are you going to track your project, your progress? What are your, your metrics? So reviewing your analytics, looking at the sales daily, tracking time, time spent daily. That's another thing important to track. And how you're going to measure the success. So customer feedback, uh, met 80% of my SMART goals. I'm just reading off the example here. Here, adhered to time allocation, stayed within budget. So those are all things that are examples in here. And then there are empty templates in here or one empty template that you, they can just make copies of where it's all to fill in. And this is the sort of thing also I would, wouldn't mind having in Canva. There's plenty of room here for, to fill in for each one of the things, each one of the categories, because it's just a very simple plan, but it is another thing you could put in Canva, but I don't think it works as a lead magnet because it would need a lot more instructions for it. So, you know, it's just use it with the course. And going back, let's see where we are, how to measure your success. So we talked about measuring success in that action plan, but you can wait to have them do that until you talk more about measuring because not everyone understands measuring metrics. So this goes through some of those, some common ones like revenue, ROI, you know, return on investment, um, conversion rate, which could be conversion from leads to, uh, you know, throughout a funnel, like people converting to become leads, leads to a low income, a low ticket, offer low ticket to high ticket. So the different things you might measure there, traffic to a website page, engagement. So how many, how many people are replying to an email as a form of engagement as well. So those can all be things for measuring. 
and different income streams are going to have different ways to measure that different apps and tools and platforms, depending on what it is. You know, something as simple as interest income is going to be in a financial statement from an investment advisor, rental income. You can look at, you know, maintenance versus what you're getting, things like that. So some tips to keep in mind, track all income streams, simplify the analytics. So make sure you can get to them easily and determine how often you're going to evaluate. It's something ongoing and you're going to keep tweaking as you go. So that is added in. And then the final module. Oh my God. Um, let me just see one question. So Shannon, I'll answer that in just a second. Let me just go through this one last module because I want to just, there's a few final tips in here that you're definitely going to want to share. Things like protecting your primary source of income. So you want to make sure that any, if you're adding stuff, it isn't harming your primary source as well. And at some point you want to start thinking about when to add more because two isn't really enough. Three is at least good. I would go for at least three and then you can add more after that. So you want to have the solid foundation first before adding, making sure you have the resources. So it's going to be the same uh, criteria each time. And there's also some tips on what to do if the stream is underperforming. Before you cut your losses, you can assess the cause and look at solutions. And then there's some next level tactics in here, like capitalizing on niche markets, technology, and branding, and stuff like that, shifting to passive income. And then the final part of the course, you're going to be reviewing and helping people uh, review what they learned. And that is the full course, <laughs> all in about 50 minutes. So I actually get to close this so I can answer some questions here. And I'll show you a little bit more from the folder, anything you want to see. But let me quickly just show you again the, the URL for that sales page. And that was this, contentsparks.com slash income streams. Very easy to remember, hopefully. And I'm going to go back to the comment now. Uh, Shannon said, would this course be an example of a first product to implement as a quick and easy product? So you're talking about the course itself, multiple building multiple income streams as a quick and easy product. I think, uh, again, it's going to depend on your time and resources and what you already have set up. Like if you have not, if you already have say a course platform, that you're using, you already are comfortable creating video and converting slides to video, then it can be really quick to set up. If you've never done one before, it's going to take you longer the first time to get comfortable with that process. Make sure you have a platform to upload it to. Um, and if you don't have an audience already, it's going to take longer to set it up as well because you have to build an audience. And that can take time. You, it takes persistence, you know, every day sharing content, being out there networking. So that part's not as quick and easy, in which case, um, you know, if you have all that, then great, it will be. But if you don't, then it's going to take longer, in which case you want to try and do something smaller if you as a product as your first one. So uh, something like templates is really quick and easy to create and set up. Honestly, if you don't have an audience already, somebody to sell something to, any product is going to take you longer to sell. It might be quick and easy to set up something like this, but it's only easy to make money from if you already have an audience. And that, I always say that with every single one of our courses with anything, focus your effort on building an audience and building an email list because that is going to make everything else easy, everything. And then you just have to consistently show up, really important. And Shannon, you also asked, I've purchased several of your white label courses recently. So I'm thinking this one would be really great to help me create an implementation plan. So are you thinking then, I guess you're thinking also of using it for yourself to go through and figure out which things to do first. Uh, in which case, 
yeah, it'd be great to go through as well and create your own plan for what kind of streams of income you're going to build up and which things to do first. But definitely, yeah, you said yes, Shannon. Um, yeah, I think this will help you with figuring that out and looking at what your non-negotiables are for each thing and which things would make sense for you. And doing these courses, selling these courses are definitely going to be good income streams and can be something that becomes very quick and easy to set up yourself once you have the pieces in place because they all feed on each other and become um, scalable, <laughs> you know, because they're complementing each other. You're using your same course platform. If you're focusing on the same audience, you're selling to the same audience, using the same marketing tactics, using the same equipment each time, and you get really fast um, because you get comfortable doing it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, learn it and then teach it. Absolutely. And Casey, you said you plan to use the lead magnet to build your email list. Great. Then make this my lower price intro course that funnels people into the more in-depth skill specific courses I'm working on, like copywriting. Yep. Add affiliate links to course on topics I don't know a lot about, like real estate investing. Perfect. That's a perfect plan for doing it. So, and the lead magnet in here was in the lead generation materials. You know, if you get it now, you also get that opt-in report built up as a, a challenge. So you can run it as a five-day challenge, the lead magnet, or you could use like one of those worksheets I showed you that would work well as a, like a small lead magnet that you could lead into doing a challenge and then selling something. But if this is going to be um, a lower ticket intro course, then you don't really need to invest in the challenge your time. You could just try first with something small, but the opt-in report in here is, here, let me hide this a second. This is in the lead generation materials and it's five steps to launching a new stream of income you can earn from straight away. So this is kind of the high level quick steps people can do. And then the course itself goes into a lot more detail because they're not going to be able to do all of this in a short report versus the full course. So this is a, a nice little intro report. Um, and that challenge I was talking about is the bonus for just the first few days until Tuesday. And that's where we have it set up already with worksheets and with the emails right there where you can use them, say, as live streams, which is a really quick and easy way to do a challenge. That was actually for whoever, I can't remember who it was, it was on my training yesterday, Charles. Oh, he's not here. I don't think he had to leave. Um, I did a training on how to use PLR to, to do a challenge and the important things to do. But in this case, it's already set up for this specific course with all the instructions and some worksheets and stuff. So this is just a bonus until Tuesday, though. Uh, what else were we talking about? You were saying, right, I, oh, that was the other thing I was going to mention on your comment, Casey, um, the skills specific courses. Yeah, what you can do with the multiple streams of income, depending on the things people pick, you can get feedback on which things they're picking more. Like if, if um, a large percentage of people want to learn more about creating those low content products, then you take one of our courses like low content product bootcamp and make that into a course that you can send them to after this one. You could teach it yourself too live, or you can have it set up, like set up a, a uh, training library and academy where you can set up different things that are skill specific that they can go do on their own time. So you can upsell from this one to something like a whole academy where you have like low, you can have the sales funnels where they're planning out funnels with upsells, supercharged sales funnels. I think it's called um, the low content products, online courses. Um, I think we have one on membership sites. We're adding more all the time. Uh, freelancing, we have a course on that. So that's something that can be a stream of income. Freelancing can be a side hustle for 
you know, you have earned income and you could be doing freelancing. So lots of different things you can do there. Uh, what else, Shannon, you said you've only sold one program at a time. Yeah, you can do it that way, but also look at automating so that you can, as you build up, as you build an audience, you can sell more of them at a time. So some things are better doing one at a time, maybe live, and then having the recordings for people. And some are perfectly fine as automated that are just knowledge base where you can add or you can add some Q and A's in. <laughs> Today is national freelancer day too. <laughs> Awesome. And bookkeeping, you must be a bookkeeping freelancer. <laughs> awesome. That's good. So this is perfect timing. Freelancing, one month stream of income. Let's see. I have officially reached the end of the hour. So if there's anything else you want to look at, did I miss anything? Showed you the challenge. I just gave you a quick peek at the opt-in report. There's a whole funnel of content here with the cheat sheet is an outline of the report, slideshow, so all the stuff you could do for setting up a funnel for building your audience. Uh, the instructor materials, I was showing you the slides throughout, but there's also follow-up emails and evaluation form, things like that. Uh, research sources is helpful as well. This is something in all, all our bigger programs, so don't let that disappear. Make sure you look at that too because it has all sorts of links in there so that you can kind of educate yourself more about these topics before you teach and teach a course. Um, yeah, Dana, 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 I don't know if I have it right. Will there be a replay? I missed the beginning. Yes. I will send out links to the replay on Sunday, but on this page afterwards, you should be able to also watch it straight from the beginning. All right. So on here or yeah, you're on Facebook. So you can watch it right from the beginning afterwards. I think Facebook has it ready almost right away. All right. And I have to say, I love your work. I'm looking forward to implementing a few of your programs. Thank you. I definitely want to see you implement them. And when you do remember as a customer, I would love to, for you to share it in the customer group on Facebook. And if you're not, if you're a customer and you're not a member of that, make sure that you do join. The link is usually at the bottom of your emails for customer emails. So, or you can just it, go on to Facebook to contentsparks.com slash, or sorry, facebook.com slash content groups, sorry, slash group slash content sparks. But that's just for customers. So you have to have bought something, but it sounds like you already are. So share it when you have it set up. And if you need some guidance to do it quickly, make sure you join that five day challenge that we have that's linked to, you can find it right at the top of the site where it says free course. You can always go and join and go into that. It says free course, but it's a challenge. It just happens to come with um, a mini course, but you can just use the course you have and create a kind of minimum viable program that you can sell right away using just the slides. So it's a really great step-by-step -step process there. All right. So don't forget about that. And Doria said, thank you for this training. Oh, you're welcome, Doria. I hope that was really helpful. I know I jammed a lot in here and probably skipped over some stuff you might have wanted to see. But if you do think of anything else, any questions, remember you can also go to support at contentsparks.com. So Fiona sees those, but she also sends anything to me that she can't answer. She's my project manager. She's intimately involved in all of this. So she'll answer what she can and ask me anything that she can't answer so that you will get that. Also, you can always tag me here on Facebook and I should see your questions here. It's just that we're on different time zones, so that's the quickest way. Um, I think that's everything. Um, Doria said, you've been trying to complete my five-day challenge. Um, is that your 
own, is that the five, the challenge that we're doing or are you setting up your own five day challenge on a certain topic? Because that is, that's two different things, obviously. And we have a whole course on how to do a five day challenge. But you could, you could use our challenge, I think also to set up a five day challenge if you wanted. But if you, if you want me to run the training that I just did for tools for mo motivation on how to set up or how to run a five day challenge, let me know because I can set a time to, to do that again. That was just a special one I just set up for, um, for Justin's people, but obviously I can do it for you guys too. So Dory, you're trying to do the free one. Okay. The tools from the um, time management one. Yeah. That's a really good starting point because it's small and you can set it up quickly. It's almost, and then you can use whatever you do as a template. And George, you said, yes, that would be great. Okay. I'm going to look at my calendar. I'm traveling again really soon. Um, just like two and a half weeks or so. I'm going to be abroad, but I will look at where I can fit that into my calendar too. All right. All right, again, I'm gonna have to close this out now, but I will look out for questions. I hope that was really helpful and you guys got some value from that and um, and can teach us to your audience too, because I think it's gonna be really helpful for people, especially with the economy and all the ups and downs. It, it gives people a sense of stability, more income they can generate, diversifying risk, uh, but it's not as simple as just saying, okay, I'm gonna buy some real estate and rent it out. That's not the best thing to do. All right, great. Thanks everybody. And I will hopefully see you soon. Take care.